Clyde Boots is a new brand stepping strong onto the scene with a very traditionally made boot called the I Can Do All. Today I try out these new boots to see if they can live up to their name in this extended test review. Plus, if you're watching within the first couple of weeks of this being posted, you have a chance to win a brand new pair in your size. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please like, comment, and subscribe. Recently, Clyde Bennett III reached out to me to let me know that he's starting a new cowboy boot company called Clyde Boots. And this is the first boot model that he's released under that brand name. This is the I Can Do All. Clyde Bennett III did send me these boots for the purposes of this review and then also promised an extra pair for the giveaway. So huge thanks to Clyde Bennett of Clyde Boots for making this video and giveaway possible. Now, without any further ado, let's break down the details of this boot with the rundown. All right, this is the I Can Do All boot from Clyde Boots. And it features a full grain cowhide leather on the foot counter and the shaft. And this is a black color. This is the only boot that they have at the time of this recording. This also features a wide square toe with a double stitched welt. And you can also see that the stitching color matches the welt color, which is a little bit different than what we normally see. It also comes in at 12 inches tall and that black leather continues there, but you can also see white overlay crosses here on this. And while crosses can signify many different things across many different cultures, the inspiration for this boot comes from Christianity, and the name comes from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You can also see down here it has about a one and a half inch leather stack heel. Also, it's important to note that there's a thick leather heel counter back here, which I always like to see. For an outsole, it's a rubber outsole. You can tell that Clyde Bennett III is from the north, having to deal with this snow. You can also see that it is a Goodyear well construction, and that well is channeled into the insole. So it is a traditional method of building a boot. A lot of newer boots use a cloth rib around here that they sew the welt to, but this one's sewed directly into the insole. Better quality construction and easier to repair. On the inside, it's leather lined and it's a very soft cowhide. And living up to the rest of the traditional features of this boot, it does have a hard leather insole with a leather heel pad, but there is some extra cushion underneath that heel pad, a little bit more than what you would usually feel in other traditionally made boots. Clyde boots are made in Mexico, and this one's coming in at $300. Now it's time to try on this boot to see how it looks and feels. I got on the I Can Do All from Clyde's boots, and immediately upon slipping my foot in this boot, that heel pad has way more cushion than most traditional boots that I've ever felt and I really like the hard leather insole, guys. For those of you new to traditionally made boots, most of them, pretty much all of them, have a hard leather surface on the inside. And while that might seem kind of shocking when you first slip on a pair of boots, that hard leather will eventually take the form and shape of your foot. So you'll get little toe grooves or little areas where the ball of your foot just sits and cradles inside that hard leather and there's seriously no other feeling like it so it feels nice and silky and i'm looking forward to breaking this boot in the sizing is pretty normal for a cowboy boot you know it's very similar to hondo it's very similar to many other traditionally made boots on the market this 11d is true to size you know, I might have been able to go down to a 10 and a half D, but uh, I'm always scared about doing that because of where the arch is. My true size is a 12 B. Clyde Boots doesn't have B widths for men and they don't have double E widths. So they're a brand new company. So they're only doing D widths for men and B widths for women. It's a comfortable boot. 
it feels amazing guys it feels very traditionally made feels very much like a hondo except that heel pad has way more cushion than what a hondo has the leather is a really supple cowhide this is going to be a joy to break in and it is a little bit heavier because of that rubber outsole but it's not really crazy heavy or anything like that it feels very normal to what other cowboy boots with rubber outsoles feel like all right here's the pov you can see that wide square toe definitely a wide square toe with that double stitched welt i like that the double stitched welt matches the thread matches the welt usually in other kinds of boots you'd see white stitching there but here they used black on black good design overall very trendy right now in the stitching when you do double stitch welts i mean tacovas is doing this even thursday boot company did this with their double stitched welts so i like that they went this direction it seems to be something that a lot of people are asking for right now all right so they look good and they feel good but how do they hold up it's extended test time snow was on the ground but it was a warmer winter day at ellis hollow farm when i showed up to work in these clyde boots since the snow was melting a little i could tell it was going to be a messy day ahead so i decided to tuck in my jeans to protect them from the mud and manure I also wanted to see what would happen when the white leather got grimy. So here we go. Up in the barn, I met Nancy, the owner of Ellis Hollow Farm, and she told me all about her unique breed of award-winning Ellis Hollow sheep. On the lambs, you see the red inside the ears. And as adults, it ends up being just a ring of red on the outside tips of the ears. Everything that's red in the wool will turn into cream color. See, it's chin is red his chin that's hair so that'll stay red and then this will all turn into cream colored wool it's a very primitive color pattern they end up being a really nice size the ewes are generally about 120 to 150 pounds they're pretty calm sheep and friendly sheep and i'm not getting younger i am an antique farmer and i don't want sheep that are going to constantly knock me down. Hey, that sounds nice to me too if I'm going to be working with these sheep today, but we still started off easy and tagged some of the new lambs that were born over the past few days. This little one was first, and her buddy on the ground kept her distracted by investigating the camera. And once she was tagged, she immediately did some investigating herself. Gosh, have you ever seen so much lamb slobber on a lens before? Anyways, we continued tagging some more newborns and it was relatively easy until we had to tag one of the mothers who had lost one of her tags at some point. She was definitely no lamb, but it was still nothing a big guy like me couldn't handle. Then one more mama sheep needed another tag and Nancy got me all hyped up saying this was her strongest sheep. And as I braced myself for the inevitable, she didn't even flinch. But I didn't really mind it being anticlimactic to be honest. As we continued with chores, we noticed this little lamb was without her mama and was obviously hungry, so we decided to venture out to see if we could find the ewe, its mom. This is where things got really sloppy for these Clyde boots, thanks to the melting snow. And the sheep wouldn't allow me anywhere near them, so I handed the lamb off to Nancy and stood back while she tried to find the mom. None of the sheep stepped forward to claim this little one, so we made the soggy trip back to the barn with the lamb in hand so we could bottle feed the little forsaken rascal. This lamb sure is a cutie, though. With the little lamb fed, it was time to get some straw and hay bales up in the hayloft of the barn. Nancy was up top, and I was in charge of loading the bales onto the elevator, starting with the straw. Soon we finished off the straw bales and moved on to the hay bales. After loading a few hay bales on the elevator, it stopped because I had accidentally popped the belt off of the engine. I unplugged the engine before fixing it because I wanted to keep all of my fingers, put the belt back on, plugged it in again, and it was back in action. And it was all great until we finished up for the day. Then I asked Nancy what her goals were for her new breed of Ellis Hollow Sheep. 
I'd like it to be established as a new breed. And, um, and I think it makes a great homesteader breed because it's a nice size uh, and it's friendly. It certainly was a friendly day on the farm with lots of work accomplished in these Clyde boots. Huge thanks to Nancy over at Ellis Hollow Farms for letting me help out at the sheep farm for a day. I do not recommend using leather boots like this in those circumstances on a regular basis. Barnyard acids, manure, mud, water, and a combination of all of those could rot out the leather and the stitching in a matter of months. It's much better to wear muck boots in those situations. However, it does break in a pair of boots really, really fast, and there will be days when your leather boots have to go through those things, so it's always a good test. Also, if you like the old Boots Got Soul hoodie, I also have t-shirts and I have links in the description if you wanted to get any. Now it's on to my final thoughts for the I Can Do All from Clyde Boots. I really like the traditional construction of the I Can Do All. I know there's gonna be some folks out there who say that because this has a rubber outsole, it's not traditionally made. I'm in a different camp, however, where as long as it has a hard leather insole on the inside, the welt is channeled into the insole and it has a hard, heel counter, really stiff, that's what I would call traditionally made, regardless of what outsole is on here or of what leather they're using up top. So this is a traditionally made boot. It's made to be repaired easily, and boots will eventually need to be repaired like this. And it's really nice to see a brand new company making boots the old way. Let's talk about cleanup real quick. These cleaned up really easy. After working at the farm, I wiped them down. I used a saddle soap to clean them, and then I used Bic 4 to condition them. And I noticed a few things while cleaning up these boots and breaking them in that I wanna share here. It's mainly three things about these boots. First thing I wanna mention is that the edge dye along the welt and around the heel comes off very easily when these boots get wet. And even the stitching lost some of its dye. It was originally white, as you can tell by the underneath here, and then they dyed it black in the factory, and that came off pretty easily from the barnyard acids and from scrubbing these boots clean. However, there are products made to put color back into the edges and the heels. And it's just called edge dressing. You can apply it to the edges of the boot along the sole and the heel and even use it to re-dye the stitches around the toe as well. And here is a side-by-side. -side. I did one boot so you can see how much of a difference there is after working all day. I don't think it's a big deal that the edge and the heel lost its color in wet weather. It happens to several different brands of boots. It's happened a lot with my Hondos. It's happened with Tony Llamas that I've had. It pretty much happens in every pair of boots that I have that I wear in wet weather. So it's not a big deal and that's the whole reason why the edge dressing is made in the first place. Another thing that I noticed while breaking in this boot is that the rubber outsole is very flexible and easy to break in. This does come with a downside, however, because it is just a little bit more fragile. I did get a couple of cracks in here. They're not very big cracks, but it's something that I wouldn't get in a Vibram outsole, for example. However, those Vibram rubber outsoles take a lot longer to break in, so you kind of have a give and take there. Do you want a really durable, beefy rubber outsole that's gonna take a while to break in? or do you want something that's a little bit more flexible, takes a little bit less time to break in, but will kind of get cracks in here where the Vibram doesn't. It's always a give and take with everything. Also, this rubber outsole does have a little bit more grip than the average cowboy boot rubber outsole, and definitely way more grip than a leather outsole. So they're probably not the best for riding horseback if you were looking to get out of stirrups quickly. This boot does seem to me to be a great boot for those bikers out there who are looking for a little bit extra grip. I know some of you take your cowboy boots to cobblers to have them put on rubber outsoles with more grip. You know, this one out of the box is probably gonna be really good for you. And finally, my last little critique about this boot is that sometimes the overlay on these crosses don't quite match up at the side seam here. And uh, that's because it's handmade, imperfections happen, and depending on where your level of OCD lands, it might bother you more than other people, but it's still something that you should see here, and it is a slight imperfection that happens on both boots here, but not on 
both sides. So sometimes they get it right and sometimes it's just a little bit off. Overall though, I think the I Can Do All is a great example of what new boot companies could do. This is traditionally made. This is how I like to see boots made. This is quality construction here at a really good value too at $300 considering that a lot of traditionally made boots now are entering that $400 to $500 level. And Clyde Bennett, owner of Clyde Boots, also provided me with a discount code for those of you out there and you can save 10% when you buy from ClydeBoots.com and use code Jeremiah Craig at checkout. And if you do purchase boots, just remember that when you get them, they should fit snug around the widest part of your foot, snug up here at the instep. You should also have a little bit of heel slip. And when you take them off, it might be a little bit difficult. So also consider maybe getting a boot jack or something. I have one that's made by Twisted Willow Fabrication here that folds up and you can travel with it. So if you get new boots and you have trouble taking them off, definitely consider getting a boot jack, whether it be mine or somebody else's online. Overall, I'm a fan of this boot. It's a great way to kick off a new brand, and I think it lives up to the name, the I Can Do All. But you also have a chance to win a brand new pair in your size if you're watching this video within the first couple of weeks of it being posted. Here's what you have to do to enter. First, like this video right now so more people see it. Number two, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and number three fill out the form at the link in the description I got some questions for you hit submit on that form and then you will be entered to win a brand new pair of the I can do all boots in your size and then on Sunday February 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern time I will announce the winner on a boots and ballads live stream where I'll play music, talk boots, and so much more. You won't want to miss it. It's a great time, seriously. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you guys have a spectacular day, and don't forget to subscribe for the giveaway. Peace, guys. I'll see you next time. I can do Climb a mountain no matter how tall I can do start to finish when I hear the call. Yeah. Thanks for watching today. Why don't you check out this other video up here about what to know when ordering boots online. Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.